So this year the weed control has been all over the place. Um, so where we're not growing horsey drape, all of a sudden we've got free time. Free time in August and beginning of September. Hello and welcome to the farm. It's the middle of June 2020. We're very excited. There's been some rain this week. We've had about 33 millimetres. So we're just going to go on a quick tour of the farm and look at all the crops. Off we go. Back in September, these fields were all seed rape. They were planted, it didn't rain, the flea beetle came, and then what was left the pigeons had. So that was the end of that. Anyway, so obviously now we've planted spring oats. So in March we sprayed off the field and then cultivated it with a big cultivator and then just drilled straight into that. And uh, when we started it was just a bit too wet, but as we planted it we dried out, which was a godsend really, because we kept the moisture. The good thing about these oats is that all they've had is, is some fertiliser, about 120 kilos, and one herbicide. No rust, no mildew, so very pleased. Nice easy crop to grow. This 50 something hectares of oats is all been sold in the open field oat pool, um, which is a mixture of different varieties, spring and winter, and over the last few years it's done quite well, so rather than find a specific market for them, they're into the open field pool. We'll see how we get on, time will tell. This is just one of our sugar beet fields, they're all very different, some are very good, uh, you can't see the ground at all, completely covered over the rows, um, and others are worse than this one and lots of smaller plants. Some germinated straight away at uh, the beginning of May, some took till uh, the end of May to emerge. So very mixed. And if you came to this field 10 days ago, um, you'd be disappointed, but they've grown massively in the last 10 days as we've had some rain and as it got a lot warmer. So this year the weed control has been all over the place, partly because it's been so dry and the uh, residual part of the herbicides didn't work very well. Um, and then we're frightened about, we had small plants, we had no plants, we had big plants. So what, what rate of product you use, um, and also the, so for the risk of damaging the plants. And then we had some cold nights, we had a little frost, and we had um, some hot days, some windy days. So it's very difficult to decide when to put the herbicide on. Um, and then for a long time, we didn't even know if we had a crop. Is it worth spending the money? Um, but now we've got a crop, we're now going to have a harvest. We did have a herbicide about four or five days ago. To me at the moment, sugar beet's just a break-even crop. At £20 a tonne, if we have an exceptional yield, we'll be okay, it'll make some money. It's a useful part of a rotation, of course, um, but it's very difficult to be enthused and invest in the crop. Back in September, we planted about 100 hectares of wheat just before it rained the week before. So we're very pleased about that and we were a bit worried really that it was ever going to rain again. But of course it did and didn't stop. Um, but just to make sure when we planted it we made sure we had a better seed bed than what we'd normally do. An extra pass with a cultivator. Um, we increased the seed rate a bit to what we'd normally do. We made sure it was in a bit deeper and it was rolled whether it liked it or not. The very dry April and May has just sort of really kept this crop clean. Um, so it hasn't had a massive amount of fungicide. And uh, you know, now it's rained especially, we've got high hopes for this field. Because of when it was planted, it was very dry. And then the following week it started to rain. It didn't stop really till March. But anyway, it rained quite a lot as we know. Um, and so it took a while for us to get our pre-emergent herbicide on. Um, and we knew this, this headland behind me, we knew it always had a quite high population of ryegrass. So I think even with a good, well-timed herbicide, it wouldn't have made it much difference. Anyway, we saw there was ryegrass as it coming through the winter. Um, it's very much just on this headland um, and the headland of another field. So really we've, we've sprayed off, I don't know, a hectare, hectare at the most. So that we didn't fertilize it, we didn't spray it with Atlantis or anything. We decided we'd abandoned it early on. This year, overall, our ryegrass problem um, is a lot better than it was last year. We've got less ryegrass popping up um, in different crops and perhaps this has been helped by we've got more spring crops so I think that's really helping um, and growing maize hopefully that's a big help as well late drilled spring crop. Compared to last year I'm very pleased with our ryegrass population still a long way to go we've still got to have strategies that control it and work out how we can do that 
throughout the rotation by lots of different means but this year big improvement so what a relief this field was one of the last fields we drilled um, it's a variety called Xdays and as you probably know it's a very disease resistant variety the best one on the recommended list so far it's been a very good disease year but what I've tried to do in this crop is uh, reduce the fungicide usage by about 25 or 35 percent. Our spring barley crop this year mostly follows sugar beet. We've got about 100 hectares. Um, I didn't want to overdo it this year because uh, everyone will be growing spring barley. Hence we got spring oats and spring wheat. All the spring barley is uh, laureate and committed to crisp maltings. So consumption in beer is down and so consumption of malt is down. Um, but what Chris would have said is, people who've got barley committed, they're going to honour those commitments and they will take it all. But uh, any that's uncommitted, it might struggle to find a home. So this year we're growing maize, as you can see behind me. Um, this is the first time we're growing maize at Morley. Um, it's sold to a AD plant locally um, and it's going to be harvested, one of the first fields they harvest, um, to get it gone and hopefully a crop of wheat in behind it. Um, so this was planted in very dry conditions um, at the end of April. So what I understand is that maize uh, starts to grow, lives off its seed till it gets to about a four leaf stage. And then at that point it starts to grow its roots and look for nutrients and, and moisture, more importantly, to make it grow. But uh, by the four leaf stage, middle of May, end of May, it's very, very dry. And I think the little roots just couldn't find any nutrients or moisture. And so they sort of sat for a long time and uh, some of the fields were a bit patchy where it was particularly dry. One of the reasons for growing maize was it's a late drilled spring crop. It's an alternative crop to grow, um, different herbicides we could use and so on. But also it spreads our workload throughout the year. Um, so where we're not growing all drape, all of a sudden we've got free time. Free time in August and the beginning of September um, makes it a bit busier in the spring. But actually, hopefully, it'll spread our workload out with in terms of machinery, but also for staff. So yes, there's plenty of work to do, but we're not perhaps run ragged like we used to be. Uh, and we've got meaningful work to do throughout the year. So hopefully it's a win-win for all of us. Just hope I can get a contract to grow some more next year. We're just here at Burfield Hall Farm now. Um, two fields behind me, which is about four and a half hectares. It's quite light, meadowy soil. Always produces lots of weeds, never very good crops. Uh, wheat's okay, but the other crops really struggle um, to come to much. Uh, it's in two fields. There's, it's a funny shape. It's two telegraph poles. Um, in the winter, it often floods or is very wet. So I've bitten the bullet and uh, instead of growing crops, uh, combinable crops, I've put them into grass. Um, hopefully we can sell the grass for silage, for hay, for, to be grazed um, for the next two or three years. As I mentioned this year, we're growing spring wheat. Uh, there's about 70 hectares of spring wheat this year uh, and I'm sort of pleasantly surprised the way it's grown so far. Planted at the end of March and uh, it's grown quite well. It's bright green and no disease in it and at reasonable height it's now just starting to produce its ears. Again, like the spring oats, it's proving a very cheap crop to grow. Um, it's also helping with my ryegrass problems. Um, yeah, yes I can find some ryegrass in here but nowhere near as bad as it would have been if it was winter barley or winter wheat. So again, step in the right direction. And this flag, and we've got some nice great big ears, so should be okay. Um, this field was planted uh, beginning of November, which is a little bit late for planting winter barley. Um, anyway, that's how it is uh, with the wet weather. And we waited for NIAB to plant their trials, so we had to wait a little bit. Um, the two fields in the distance, they were planted two or three weeks sooner. They're much lighter fields, so we ploughed and drilled them one day. And then it absolutely poured down with rain at the end of the week. Some of the headlands aren't very good and the soil all ran together. So there's a few patches where there's no barley at all. Um, so anyway, in hindsight, I'm glad we did because we've got a crop. The alternative was to have a bare field or more spring barley. It's a bit quiet here today, but it is Saturday. Um, all the buildings are let um, with sort of fairly content tenants and for a long period of time, three or four years, um, and just in the last few months, they've all been okay and, and they've all been paying their rent. So uh, hopefully that's set to continue.
whilst this grass car park looks nice, the problem is over the years, with it being so dry, and it's sort of based on foundations of uh, crushed concrete, and then about three inches of soil, and light sandy soil at that, then grass on top, typical builder way of growing grass. But actually the grass hasn't grown, and we've had a lot of broadleaf weeds grow. And although they look green, um, it's not quite as nice as it should be. Anyway, the good news is we haven't had any visitors for a long time, so I've managed to chain harrow this little car park, reseed it with grass, I've been watering it, now it's rained, and some of the fine grasses are slowly getting established. Um, so hopefully we'll have, a, we'll have a good car park soon. So remember, next time you visit, keep off my grass. <laughs>